Hi everyone, welcome back to our series on advanced security in ACI. Uh, my name is Goran and I come to you from Security BU. I wanted to show you a demo of what we have going on at Cisco Live Berlin. And this is a training lab that I do with the ACI TME, Minako Higuchi. Uh, we run these exercises for our uh, attendees and use ASA and FTD device packages. Uh, in my demo, I'm going to show you how to quickly stand up your security in ACI so that it can come up at the same time as applications and its networking comes up. Uh, we're going to also look at uh, how we can set up our dynamic policy to get these constructs from APIC of what EPGs are in place and what their IP members are. Uh, and lastly, we're going to look at uh, dynamic workload quarantine with FMC remediation package for APIC where we extend auto enforcement of our uh, policies into the fabric. We're going to start out with a tenant with just three simple EPGs and run all of our Python automation to get the contracts in place with their security uh, as well as L3 outs. At the last exercise we'll be creating quarantine uh, EPG uh, for that uh, uh, rapid uh, uh, thread containment uh, demo. I want to show you this diagram for the lab. Um, all of these items really showcase our three EPGs, their hosts that we're going to have access to, an outside host, an ASAV on the outside that peers with the fabric, and we have our ASA context on the cluster that does L3 out and um, extends protection for the web EPG. We also have our context on the failover setup of hardware that uh, is a PBR one arm uh, service graph that inserts between two EPGs in the same bridge domain. And finally, we have our Firepower NGFWV that uh, uses FTD device package to orchestrate protection between app and database. So let's take a look at our setup. Here's our APIC. We don't really have anything else set up besides these uh, EPGs that you see here. I'm going to open up all of these folders so that we can see when um, items get uh, put in place. Uh, if I look at my vCenter, the items that I showed you in the picture from my <coughs> endpoints, app, DB, and web, uh, my outside ASAV, my outside host, and my NGFW and its manager are also there in virtual form. Um, if I look at my uh, FMC here, I have a registered um, FTD virtual device. Uh, it doesn't have any configuration, but I do have a policy in place uh, with a single rule that has uh, these destination ports allowed for communication between app and DB. The security zones for that device are going to be attached into this rule. And I also have a malware protection policy in place. We're going to use that as part of our last demo. So let's get to it. We have our terminals into all the endpoints here and I have my API client um, here as well. Uh, this API client has a Cobra uh, package installed uh, to allow us to run all the Python scripting that we want. This is all the script we're going to run. So let's uh, start out uh, uh, with our first step that validates that we have all of our EPGs in place. Um, next, we're going to actually create a device manager for our FTD and that device. You can see those actually uh, created here. We're going to continue to create the config, the service graph, and we're going to apply that service graph and create the contract here, app to db uh, If I look at my picture, it has changed to add that contract, and I will uh, also show you the log for this FTD device package on APIC. You can see that APIC is starting to talk with REST APIs to FMC and I'll take a peek at my FMC here uh, at my device which already has IPs and zones configured and inside the policy itself 
I can see the existing rule was updated with security zones and I also in the config have a new rule created that blocks traffic from it's a blank rule created by APIC. So I'll let uh, APIC actually deploy that configuration to FTD and we'll continue on and build the rest of our tenant here. Uh, next step is to build PBR bridge domain um, and redirects with IP and MAC for our ASA context and uh, next we will be registering the context here as you see uh, creating its configuration uh, service graph and also applying it with a wizard to create the contract itself uh, this service graph requires an update to selection policy uh, to get things to work so that was done and now if we look at our ASA um, we should uh, start out some connectivity tests here uh, we can actually go from our web uh, to outside following that uh, ping from that we, we haven't built this service graph yet this app can actually test our uh, contract that we just built with our ASA actually works and lastly we can test our FTD contract to see if it's in place and it actually is uh, responding to ICMP so it is now the last steps we're gonna create our outside to web device our cluster context on ASA its configuration uh, L3 out uh, the device and we will finish by creating that contract as well so this contract is going to take some time uh, to get connectivity because our ASA cluster actually has to populate the routes in place for this. So we'll pause recording here to just see all the routes populate. This is our PBR service graph ASA. If um, we actually test it um, again with a few other connections here. Uh, we actually see the syslogs for those connections uh, uh, show up here for the web and ICMP. If I go back to my context here for outside connectivity, I'm uh, trying to see if all the routes are actually populated and I can actually see the connectivity there and the routes are in place. So our tenant has now been fully built with all appropriate connectivity we have our three contracts in place with all the security. So next we're going to proceed to look at that dynamic policy that we can have in place. If we go back to our diagram here, I am going to enable attachment notification uh, for this service graph here on our ASA cluster. Um, and that will learn these EPGs, either web, app, and outside as well. So we will go to our service graph for the cluster and just um, as good practice here I will attach uh, I will check the attachment notification for both consumer and provider and just as I did that I can see that my ASDM is flashing here which means that some configuration had changed there so I'll just go and take a look at what has changed here um, in the firewall configuration under access rules I can see that there's a new object by EPG that has a tenant name my external EPG and the subnet that actually is on the outside of our uh, fabric so we had learned that from APIC that has created that object group that we can now use in the access lists I will also enable attachment notification on the provider side and immediately ASDM notices that something had changed and if I look here I actually have my web EPG object group also populated here with the IP of my web um, endpoint. Uh, if I want to learn also the app which is in the same bridge domain what we have to do is go to the app EPG and provide this contract into it. It has those two contracts in place already so we can add uh, that particular contract. Just before I actually submit this, I would like to show you that my outside host um, can open a web connection to the web 
endpoint but if I actually attempt the same web connection to app it is not working so we will submit this and retry that web connection again and see that it's working now from outside to app so this now means that we can actually start leveraging those objects uh, in our uh, ASA let's look at the ASDM if it has updated that latest app EPG and we can see that it's there now we can leverage these objects to control that connectivity so let's do that in the function profile of APIC uh, we will go and do that in the cluster function profile here and I'll modify my access list for just that web connectivity that I showed you earlier so here for my destination address for ACE permitting web connectivity I have destination any and I will basically change that to only allow in my tenant application profile name web EPG will only be allowed to be a destination at the same time I'll remove any and if I submit this now APIC will go talk to ASA and uh, change that configuration of the access list itself and you can see it right here ASDM had picked up the change my previous ACL for HTTP had a destination any if I refresh it now I actually have a web object group in place so if my outside now again tries to attempt that connection it is not working uh, and we'll just verify that ASA is denying that TCP connection and you can see um, <clears throat> we'll just retry that a few a few more times and here's that deny syslog that we're actually preventing that connectivity into app uh, of course if I attempt my uh, web connection uh, I can actually get all of that to happen uh, through the ASA. I have that in a while loop, that's why I'm generating so many syslogs. So that is how uh, we can get our dynamic policy updated and this is not only about creating those items, we can actually disable those attachment notifications and APIC will just clean out those uh, members out of those groups and prevent that connectivity. What we'll do now is switch gears into remediation package here. So as part of this communication, and we have two of our endpoints here that have connectivity to each other. So that is our app to DB contract. We have pinging, and we can actually uh, do web connectivity between those. Um, what we can do now is try to send a particular file uh, from this app application endpoint to the database over that same contract and uh, what I have in place is that malware policy I showed you but I also have a uh, policy uh, based on this remediation with APIC um, so that is in place here I call it RTC instance um, if we just take a quick peek at it uh, it does have a quarantine of the endpoint enabled and we can look at the correlation policy which is important piece here that triggers remediation uh, we have that policy defined and we have a rule inside of that policy that specifies uh, any malware event learned from our network based de detection that has a known disposition will actually trigger that uh, remediation so the rule itself if we open up the policy here um, is triggering um, that action so that's the rule that's enabled so now we can actually go to analysis and um, correlation and status here and watch as we actually launch that uh, uh, bad file across the uh, fabric in the firewall what will actually happen so what I'm gonna do here instead of just uh, getting a uh, a uh, good web file. I'm going to try to get that uh, exe file. You can see that the connection was reset and I'm actually unable to reach that host anymore. 
right? Uh, no longer have connectivity from app into that database. And if we look at our graphical representation of our tenant, we see a quarantine app with uh, our virtual machine inside of it. Um, it has that IP address uh, as an attribute. We can also find it here under application profile. It does have our IP address. If we go back to our FMC now, we do see we had a successful completion of remediation. Uh, to gain more information, we can go to correlation events and find um, you know, the source test uh, IP and port of this attack and find more information about this uh, uh, file that was attempted to transfer its uh, uh, known disposition. So that concludes our demo. Uh, I hope to see you at uh, Cisco Live Berlin. If not, I wish you a great day and thank you for watching.